My name is Peter Berniger, and this is a review of the Dolman Helix One turntable. The turntable is available through the Audio Union. This is a company based in Bulgaria, headed by Ruman Artarsky. Ruman is, as they say in audio circles, the Caesar of this empire of the Audio Union. Mark Dolman is from Australia. He has been designing turntables since the early 1980s. Uh, he teamed up with the Audio Union to produce this turntable. It's fully made in Bulgaria. All the CNC machining, all the pieces are made in Bulgaria at Ruman's factory. Uh, the Audio Union is a combination of Encline, Frank Schroeder from Schroeder Arms, and Mark Doman for the turntable. In addition, Ruman designs, through a team of engineers, the Thrax electronics and loudspeakers, which you've seen in a number of our videos. Taken together, the audio group forms the audio union. The tone arm is available through the audio union and manufactured by Ruman Artarsky at his facility. This is a Frank Schroeder designed tone arm called the CB. Now the tone arm is unique. The anti-skating has the magnetics built in to the tube of the arm that it sits on. Not inside the arm coming out, but the post. And you can twist and turn it uh, to get the proper distance between the magnets to give you the pull back and forth for the anti-skating. Uh, the vertical on the arm is at the very top of the arm and the horizontal is the second lower part on the arm as you can see here in this close-up. The arm is available in 9 and an 11 inch version so that you have your choice. Uh, the longer tone arms today feature a more relaxed laid-back sound. The shorter tone arms today are more incisive and give you more detail. So it's your choice. You can have both. You can mount a long arm or a short arm on this turntable. You can mount two tone arms on this turntable. So you can effectively have your mono cartridge on one tone arm and your stereo cartridge on another tone arm. The tone arm bases are attached through a separately machined uh, platform that houses the structure that holds a tone arm in place. The turntable itself, as you can see me here moving it back and forth, is on one bearing, central bearing in the middle. Now the bearing is the unique secret sauce in this turntable. The bearing is made by minus K. Now minus K is an anti-vibration platform company that makes footers and devices and platforms for microscopes, for NASA, for space telescopes. This technology that's utilized in here is called negative stiffness vibration isolation. It, it's really uh, two anti-vibration technologies into one. Uh, the first of it is a tilt motion isolator and then that is combined with a horizontal motion isolator together to create a negative stiffness vibration isolation system. So it looks like a spring, common spring, coil spring, but there's leaf springs and elastometers involved in the whole construction of the unit, as you again can see in this diagram. That forms the heart of the turntable isolation system. The issues with turntable isolation are obvious. Footfalls walking past the turntable, suspended floors as we have here. I can jump up and down next to this turntable and it won't, the needle won't move in the groove. It'll continue to play music. That's an, a, a huge advantage uh, for any turntable user. The second advantage is it fully isolates the sound of the motor, this system, from coming through the tone arm and the cartridge. Effectively, 
This results in the quietest turntable I've ever reviewed. There is no noise. It is dead silent. I'm, there is absolutely no noise. In fact, now is a good time to let Mark Doman himself tell us a little bit about the turntable. Um, here with a new turntable. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of the Audio Union uh, family of products. This is the Doman Helix One. It's a uh, belt-driven turntable and it features a number of innovations. Um, people have been very interested, for instance, just looking from the outside that this platter doesn't appear to spin. That's actually an acoustic shield for the side of the platter. We're trying to minimise the amount of acoustic interactions with the product. We can't, of course, shield the top of the surface of the LP. You have to play that. But mm -hmm. The turntable also has the facility to handle two tone arms. In this case, we're um, offering the CB tone arm from Frank Schroeder, which is a new design of, of Frank's, which is harmonising well with the Helix One turntable. And this arm here is actually a special arm that Frank's developed for Oswald's Mill Audio, and he's showing it here for the first time. Um, the turntable has 33 and 45, which one would expect. Um, but one of the interesting features is it's a very, very low frequency suspension system. And what that's designed to do is isolate, for instance, if we were to play a record, which I could put a needle in the groove, lower the arm, I can shake the infrastructure violently and the tone arm does not miss track. Mm -hmm. The cartridge just continues tracking through. So the turntable is exceptionally well isolated from footfall and for instance installations where people have a small attic in an old house and there's old wooden floorboards and you know they might be used to tiptoeing around their turntable and if kids run into the room the needle jumps and so on so we tried to come up with a design that would completely ameliorate those effects and give people the confidence to have a turntable on normal furniture um, they might have a beautiful antique table they want to use um, this turntable is pretty much immune to the uh, industrial and other noises that can be generated in a house mm -hmm. or other environments. Mm -hmm. That includes concrete floors by the way. Mm -hmm. What we did is it's not just a turntable sitting on a minus K, it's actually the turntable is fully integrated. The minus K offers a low frequency um, isolation but the higher frequencies are crossed over mechanically into a brand new chassis design. The chassis design technology actually goes back to the work of Ernst Chladni in the 1700s. He's known as the father of acoustics and Chladni plate analysis uh, has been used by luthiers when they're designing very very expensive handmade violins, violas, cellos, any, and piano makers even use the technique. These days we can actually uh, also do that work in software but it's actually a physical way of checking the vibrational performance of a surface. You can look it up on YouTube, it's spelt C-H-L-A-D-N-I, Chladni, and there are many videos there showing how these techniques are used. Mm -hmm. We use this in the turntable to provide very, very um, special mounting areas for the infrastructure like the motor, the bearing and the tone arms. And we believe that's lowered the noise. That principle we've given it a name of micro-signal architecture. So the idea is, is that not only electrically but also mechanically everything's been done to suppress noise and interference from the external environment. So I was able to work with the Kleinbeck brothers from Ankline as part of the Audio Union team. Tom Kleinbeck got involved with making the electrical signature of the turntable mm -hmm. um, as quiet as we can possibly make it. Mm -hmm. The mechanical signature, of course, is being helped with the minus K and also our, our chassis engineering. So we believe that we've set, established a new benchmark in performance for low noise and uh, getting rid of muddiness in the base. And there's no um, difficult systems to operate. It's very, very easy to operate and install. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're very, very pleased with the result. Well, wasn't that fascinating? And in combination with the Schroeder arm, we're also using the Believe High Fidelity Distributed Yurushi Phonograph Cartridge. 
This is handmade, the body of the cartridge in Japan. Urushi is a painting technique. The designer of the cartridge makes the actual shell for the cartridge and dips it into the Urushi paint in a time-honored tradition uh, that's well known in Japan. So together, this forms, to me, the quietest turntable available on the market today. We'll move on to a listening session and then I'll give you my final findings on the turntable. Here we go.